being an ardent fan of the Indian cricket team, following the team in the TV, uh, whenever they play here in Kolkata for the last over a decade, you can say. I have seen some very good times, uh, victories in uh, Australia, near old ODIs in England, all over the world. With the World Cup uh, win being uh, standing supreme on all of those achievements, but also have gone through some very bad times. Yes, it's a part and parcel of the life, you have some good times, you have some bad times, but nothing can be worse than what happened down under in Australia this time. Fornan, well, once again the team doesn't seem to learn from their mistakes in uh, the white was they had against in England last summer and uh, well uh, time for us uh, to really look into what, has, what wrong is going on with the team because 8-0 the team isn't that bad no, it's not that bad number one few days back and we will discuss about it well uh, talking about discussions BCCI has called a meeting on the 13th of this Feb and uh, let the BCCI do their work uh, while we continue to discuss and that's why I introduce a very good friend of mine Budhadit Topain he's a great expert and well I totally hand over the camera to him because well this will be his personal uh, blog entirely so Budhadit Good evening ladies and gentlemen and Kombama Minasan being a Japanese student I'm saying that as always so I personally first and foremost thank my very good friend Mr. Chakiji for inviting me over here in his personal blog and to share my own opinion about this to get the battle of the Indian cricket team the champs at home and cats down under in England as well so first and foremost, as an Indian fan as well, I must point out that it's been very very depressing and very very demoralizing since we have done so well in the last two couple of tours down under and we expected at least a fight back from our Indian team after going 2-0 down at Sydney like it happened in 2008-2009 under Anil Kumble. but unfortunately for us this was quite a different story. The things just kept going from bad to worse for the Indian team. And now a very good question and a very expected question is being raised whether the seniors need to be given out and whether the youngsters need to be blooded in. Well, personally, I have always been very critical of Virat Kohli in the team and always had said that Rohit Sharma should be back in his place. But well, Kohli has proved his credentials as of yet. So I think it's time that, uh, I mean, as everyone's been saying that Lakshman needs to go, obviously, because if he can't score down under, then he can't score against anyone. It's seems like that. I'm me being a personally big fan of his as well but really it's time to see into the future because even if he does play, how long can he play anyway? We need to groom in youngsters because Rohit Sharma is not a spring chicken either. He was already 24. So if we wait even more longer then they will get old and things will not be like that. I mean we must take some examples from the Australian cricket team and the great competition there is in their team which has been highly fabulous to watch. I mean personally as Indians, we always criticize the Aussies for the sledging and etc. and etc. But one can't help really admiring their team spirit and their hunger to win. I mean, each and every one of them, look at Ponting, he's diving at the age of 39. And we don't see that from the likes of even our youngsters. I mean, okay, we may see from, Rav, I mean, Kohli and others, but Ravid and Lakshman, they are, I mean, what can you say? A real terrible on the, as far as running between the wickets is concerned. So, as I was saying, so perhaps Rohit Sharma needs to be blooded in in place of Lakshman and Dravid perhaps he will hang his boots because another point of another point to discuss is that these are great players. I mean you don't want to see great players embarrassing themselves on the cricket field. I mean they should realize this as well and let pass and uh, leave the path for the youngsters to come in. As far as Tendulkar goes, this is a very dicey issue and I know many people on Facebook have a differential opinions about Tendulkar and his contributions to the game etc. But personally from a cricketing point of view as I have seen, he has still looked his part. I mean he has got out to few good balls but his technique has been well and in the first two matches he was the only Indian player who was playing well. So I think he can still play a little longer but as far as the Dravid and Lakshman I think it's time for their time is up. And uh, one even more problem for the Indian team is the bowling. I mean, they have failed to take 20 Australian wickets. Forget 20. I mean, I don't think they've even taken 10 wickets in the last two matches. I mean, that's how the situation is. And in England, we had a lot of excuses like Zahir Khan being not there, other players being injured. But this time, a full-fledged bowling attack going there and not being able to dismiss Australia in the last two matches. I mean, not even once in the entire in four innings. That is really unfortunate. So, we have talked about Umesh Yadav, but he has been inconsistent. Zahir Khan is the only one who has been bowling well and consistently, but that again is a problem because he is again an aging bowler. There is no 
assuredly how long he was going to play. So after he goes, who knows what is going to happen to the Indian cricket team. And even another problem is the spinners. I mean, where are the spinners? The Indian team has always been talked of as great spin attacks. So where is the spin attack? I mean, Ashwin, okay, Ashwin has been brilliant with the bat actually. But as far as bowling is concerned, there is still a lot to be desired because he has not been able to flight the ball and deceive the batsman on the flight, which is what is desirable of the spinner. So one can ask that perhaps Harbhajan Singh needs to be thought of again or the likes of Pius Chawla and Amit Mishra need to be thought again in the Indian cricket team. Anyway, so with the new, the like Sevak said, I agree with him that uh, the past is past. There is no point looking at these miserable performances and uh, perhaps they can show a better fight in the one days and at least, I mean, put up a fight and uh, keep the reputation as champions because if you don't want to see the world number one champions who won such a fabulous final at the Wanke Day go around like a pack of cards there. That's very unfortunate for cricket and very demoralizing and very depressing. So that's an, another thing I would like to point out is that, um, okay, I know that India has been playing very, very poorly in the last few series and uh, them being tigers at home and cats abroad, but uh, I would like everyone to see that, well, India is not the only team being cats abroad. I mean, look at England. They bundled out for 72, chasing 144. I mean, that's even more hilarious than the Indian team. That is not only an, only one issue. Previously, we have seen Sri Lanka, World Cup finalists go down even like a pack of cards in South Africa. South Africa in recent times have played well. That's because they have played all their matches at home. They haven't done well in a away series for a long time. The only team that has looked okay in abroad series is Australia. Despite getting bowled out for 47, they showed a lot of character to come back in that second test match and winning it and drawing level with South Africa and South Africa. That was a very good job. But hey, India also did it last time as well. So in that aspect, every team has been doing poorly so it's unfair to say only India 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 because we are all passionate about the game that is one thing and the other thing being that um, the captaincy issue with Sri Lanka that is again a quite a very funny issue because Dilshan being made captain down he's giving it up Jayawardena being reappointed captain seems like a rigmarole of a situation going over there so actually Truthfully speaking, no cricket team has been having a hunky-dory kind of a very sweet scenario as far as cricketing terms is concerned other than Australia because Australia has been really doing well and uh, personally I think they can they have shown the spirit and most importantly the hunger to succeed and I think they are going to I mean from what I have seen I expect them to win the tri-series and I expect India to be a finalist because Sri Lanka has been even worse than India and let's see what happens so once again I um, so goodbye to all of you with again thanking my good friend for inviting me over here and letting me have my own words and thank you very much mata imashu well uh, that's what that was really pretty simple as our good friend by well he made plenty of very important points about the england about a very important phrase tigers at home and cats abroad well, uh, truly what I said, England played miserably. But well, we should not look into that aspect because we should be much uh, more uh, concerned about what we are doing. And I, we hope, as he last uh, said, CB series is totally different, the ODI is totally different, the format, the ball, everything. And well, with a new team, new players coming in the squad, young blood introduced, we can hope for the best. But well, can't forget the past, although yeah, we should keep it on one side because we need to learn or rather accept the mistakes we have made and not uh, commit them once again. So, well, it was a big pleasure for me to introduce my friend Brian with a very nice blog. I am sure you all liked it and well, oh, I don't know any Japanese words. Be very much plain and simple as an Indian. Just with English, I say thank you once again for being, for being with me. Keep sending on emails and goodbye.